The Silenced. The birth of a new day selflessly welcomes the spoils of yesterday. Walking, thinking, breathing, stop breathing, still walking. So tired is the day. Each step coddled with a fervent fight of intention. Ignore the gaze of haze. Victorious is the forced ponder of an innocent day, free of malice. Unbearable truths denied, veiled eyes preferred. The whisper of false truths heard as clashing symbols. How deafening is the sound of turned backs, silent voices and rolled back eyes. Such lavish honesty. A carelessly tamed tongue now defiles and springs up with violent truths, an ambitious deed to dissemble cemented thoughts of depravity another expected loss. Oh, why such a thing? What is this thing? Where is its genesis? The absent limbs of equality, soulless shoes, crippled faith, painfully visible. A sun held hostage, no release to lay upon the skin of the naked. Make it sun-kissed. A stillbirth reality, no mercy or grace, such destined, void of the day. Such a tiresome, dedicated dance. Toes pointed, toes strong, then weak. Toes bruised, then bleeding. Shoes soaked and heavy. Where is this selfish robber? Where are the spoils? What is left to spare? The goods of youth and grave both stolen, no petty ransom, simply taken. No attempt to beguile, that is saved for the worthy. Now, a resounding yes to a selfish pause. Breathe. The click of a lighter, candles burning, wax covers the foot of a statue of St. Michael. Her knees are bruised and sore. Echoes fill the bedroom from days of pleading with the holy. Tears falling on photos. There is laughter. There are pools of despair and frustration that stain the carpet. It's been 21 days now. The patriarch continues to fight for his life the tug and pull of life and death, he dreams of Ecuador, shifting through fields of pink roses. He takes a deep breath and sees his wife. Consuelo is laying down, watching the skies. The nurse wipes his eyes and adjusts the ventilator settings. Muffled voices and writing on glass walls. He turns around as the sunlight blinds him. Squinting for a moment, he glances. Are you calling me, daughter? Eres tú, mi chiquita? Is that you, my little one? It's been days upon days, eternity, an epoch, and an age. In her broken English, she shifts through her mind to understand the call. She's visited almost daily. 
her words hanging alongside a sea of hope at the entrance to the hospital. She trembles, silent as she arrives, barely letting out a whisper, her brothers holding her upright. Her eyes meet my eyes, desperate for respite, desperate to be seen and understood. I clear them to enter as they somberly walk to the place where time has stopped, where a history has come to an end, where a storybook has been closed. The air is thick from the souls departing. The air is thick with fog that follows death as she arrives draped in the feathers of the condor, as she enters once again to claim another body. It's been 21 days. He died on the 21st. One of my favorite video games begins with the line, war never changes, and I believe it to be true. Our justifications for violence, our excuses for domination, protection, enlightenment, manifest destiny, these may shift and take new form like a shapeless tide, but the action itself, the action of war, never changes. It is the simultaneous murder and suicide of a lamb. And the soldiers that fight in a war are not the only ones who know this truth. Ask the mothers, the daughters, the wives. Ask the best friends who look into their friends' eyes and see the novel wounds where an innocent soul used to lie. I do not think you have to be a soldier to go to war. I think a war is taking place in our neighborhoods, our hospitals, our homes. Insidious terminologies snake their way like vines into our mouths and into our minds, front lines, body count, hero. We are all in the ethos of a soldier in the trenches, but the enemy is invisible, and in truth could reside in any one of our teammates, our loved ones, ourselves. War does not change, but it does change you. And in the throes of my own mortal combat, I offer a stratagem to combat this. Hold the lamb in your blood-soaked hands. Do not let the growing, almost deafening sounds of 7 p.m. war drums drown out its last goodbyes. Savor and venerate them as you would a newborn's first cry. Frightened, fresh, and inimitable. When will the sun rise again? My glasses are fogging. Is my mask on right? I fight the urge to stick my gloves up under my shield and adjust it. I'm already in the room with my patient. As she coughs so hard, her entire body shrivels inward as if to cushion the blow to her lungs. She looks so fragile, the opposite of the patients I typically see on the maternity unit, just one floor above us. Two rooms over, a loved one has been given special permission to come say goodbye. I'm not in the ICU, but my patients with DNR orders are dying. Normally, I see some of the first breaths a person takes after they enter this world, and now I'm witnessing some of the last. My patient tells me she's nervous, but she didn't have to. I can see it in her eyes. This is our new reality, her and I. 
We're experiencing this pandemic together. It feels like a formidable bond. When she's cold, I add blankets to her thin, fragile body. When she calls to say she's hot, I don my PPE once again, readying myself for battle against a nearly invisible virus and go in to help make her more comfortable. The dance continues, hour after hour, until somewhere outside, the sun must be beginning to rise. In a couple of hours, what has been the most exhausting night of my short nursing career will end. But will it? The sun might be out, but is the night over? When will this darkness finally pass? Death is usually far removed from our daily lives. We don't talk about it, think about it, or entertain the possibility that it may happen to us. Of course, ordinarily, we simply may be too busy to dedicate time and energy to such an exhausting or exhausting topic. Lately though, we don't have a choice. Death is everywhere. Headlines put the glaring truth front and center. Thousands are dying of COVID-19. Death, it seems, has touched almost everyone and everything. Obituaries include entire families, morgues are overflowing, and every normal thing, including buying toilet paper, has been impacted by the possibility that death is much closer than ever before in our lifetimes. In our current crisis, and as the death toll looms, we find ourselves again looking for a guide. Scientific literature about treatments, all of it hastily and hopefully published, has exploded an attempt to create one. Millions of meditation apps and gurus have sprung up overnight. Churches are virtually overflowing. People are searching everywhere, looking inward, outward, and all around for peace. What if this is the key to our modern ours? Weeks prior, someone might have had family with them, roses and eucalyptus at their bedside. Maybe their child or sibling or parents would have held their hand someone to let them know they were not alone. I guess, in truth, everyone dies alone. The nurse called the family, then we started back to provide post-mortem care. On the way, the nurse responded to another, yeah, hold on, my patient expired. Expire, ick, spy, your. Verb, cease to be valid, come to an end, die. Only I could not help but think about an expiration date on food, meaning, colloquially, no longer good. Sheets tossed into the soiled linens bag, there lied a body before me. 70 years old, diabetes mellitus. There was a recent below the knee amputation of the left leg. No phantom waiting here. I watched my hand stretch out and close the eyes. Passive. My purple nitrile fingers lifted the chin to close the mouth. Neither breath nor air now. I helped a mobile patient before, but what if I felt a cadaveric spasm? I looped a tag on an intact toe. Several were necrotic. As we placed him in a zipper bag, his head lolled over. An eyelid opened. I looked him in the eye.
We watch each other carefully. With x-ray vision, we scan for the signs. Do you have the mark upon you? Will you be one of the hordes foaming at the mouth? Are you my downfall? Social distancing belies the intent. There is nothing social about it. The fragile thread of community broken in an instant. Panic is aerosolized, and accusations fly on speedy wings. Our senses are quarantined, no touching, no seeing, soon no hearing or tasting, just to be safe. Let's lock ourselves away, give us a curfew. Am I the voice of reason? Soothing nonsense with measured calm and practicality. You're fine, I say. The bark is worse than the bite. Tell me why. Why do I still feel apprehension's icy fingers at my neck? I have a picture hanging on the wall in my bedroom. It says, there is sunshine in my soul today. Each morning that I wake up early to a bright, sunshiny day, I am filled with instant joy. It's the little things they say, after all, that bring the most joy. The sound of the birds chirping. My new wind chime that my mom gave me for Easter making beautiful music outside my window when the wind wisps around. A drive to or from work with the windows down, sunroof open, and a good song on the radio that I can sing to. I can ask for no greater small joy during these times. A glimpse back to normalcy, if only for a moment of life before COVID-19. I've been seeing a lot of posts about rainbows children coloring rainbows on sidewalks of hospitals or in their own driveways with sidewalk chalk or seeing them taping pictures in their windows or on their front doors when I go for a run in my neighborhood. Interestingly enough, the passage that I read when I was fit tested for my N95 mask was about rainbows. The man explained to me that this passage was chosen because its text allows the mouth to move, mostly always possible. I've also read that this passage is used in speech therapy. This type of test ensures that no dangerous disease particles enter through the mask when speaking and that the mask fits properly. I am thinking now that this is a sign. A rainbow after a rainstorm.
The broken pieces are not truly broken. Like a canyon cut by flowing waters, I am crafted. By experiences, reactions, choices, and feelings. The grooves and notches can be painful, give unwanted texture. Closeness in time, in space, magnifies these. But when I climb to the rim, I see my fullness. I see my fullness. I see my fullness. I see my fullness.